independent country, it's a sovereign country with a set of cultures and uh, values. We are not uh, in the discrimination of anyone. It intends to stop the promotion of homosexuality in our country and the inducement of our children into a behavior that's dangerous to them. And as the politicians are seen to stand up to Western demands, it makes them more popular at home. But for many of the international donors, the new law has crossed a line. Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Kampala, Uganda. Meanwhile, Scotland has proposed a plan to offer asylum to anyone persecuted by Uganda's new law. Scotland recently made gay marriage legal and lawmakers there, as well as many lawmakers throughout the world, have expressed fear that the law could lead to backlash and even death for gay people living in Uganda. Now to the story of a man who had a transformational experience in Uganda. Griffin Matthews traveled to the African nation to help build a school. He and his colleague Matt Gould turned his, their experience into an award-winning musical about the challenges of American aid workers abroad. It's called Witness Uganda. Gentlemen, both co-creators who are also behind the nonprofit, the Uganda Project, join us now for our weekend conversation this morning and there in Boston. Fellas, thank you so much for joining us. First off, let me just say, I confess that I saw your play while it was still in workshop mode right here at Columbia, New York, and it was incredibly moving. Uh, Griffin, in many ways, this was your own experience. You're an openly gay man who traveled the globe on this journey of self-discovery. So what did you learn and what surprised you in terms of your own identity? You know, I think that it was, uh, you know, a transformational experience for me because I left New York City. I was young. I had just graduated from acting school at Carnegie Mellon, and I was trying to find my place inside of the, the industry. And while I was having some trouble, you know, doing that, breaking in, I was also newly out to my church community and found that I didn't quite have a home there either. So I went to Uganda to do some volunteer work and uh, quickly discovered that I had gone to a country that uh, was one of the most dangerous places in the world for gays. Um, so I had to, you know, keep that very quiet. But, you know, back home I was identified as gay and when I was in Uganda working with the, the students that I met and the people that I met, I quickly realized that my sexuality was so small and uh, that my work in the world was much bigger. You felt like your sexuality was so small. In what ways? Did you ever have any negative backlash? Were you as equally out there in Uganda? Sure. I mean, not, not in Uganda. I haven't uh, had any backlash there. But back home in New York, it, you know, when, when I came out, I was... I had issues inside of my church, I was put out of the choir, and it was, you know, a big wow. deal, and so I thought that my sexuality defined me, and then I got to Uganda and started working with students and working inside of a program where I was being loved and accepted. Uh, even though they didn't quite know who I was fully, I still found that I was not just gay to them. I was, you know, a, a mentor, I was a friend, I was a brother, I was, you know, someone that they could rely on. And so that gave me a new perspective about my sexuality back home. And Matt, what about you? Why did you feel theater was the right way to share this particular story? Well, I think that when we go to the theater and we hear someone sing, it's like the equivalent of, of hearing someone cry. Wow. And I think that, that the questions about what our responsibility as Americans are to the rest of the world uh, are really imperative to our generation. They're questions that everyone is asking uh, and that everyone is struggling over. And so for me, theater and music were really the obvious way to try to tell a story that is uh, that I think just so dramatic and so linked up with the root and the soul of what our generation is trying to figure out. So Griffin, Matt, what was your reaction then to the anti-gay bill that was passed in Uganda just this week? Um, I think it was an incredibly sad day, not just for Uganda, but for the world. Um, I didn't think that the bill was going to be passed because back in 2009 when the, the Kill the Gays bill was struck down, it gave me hope that, that uh, Uganda was on the right track. And for me, uh, I was devastated when the bill was passed this week. Uh, Red Pepper published 200 names of supposed right. gay people. And I think that for me, 
that is the start of something far worse. Hmm. We say that we've learned from history. We say that we don't want to repeat the mistakes. And yet here we are in this day and age repeating the mistakes. And I think that it is uh, up to us inside of this country and the world to not be silent about this issue. And when you say start of something worse, do you mean the public shaming now that's coming with publishing what they said was the 200 top hom homosexuals in the country? I mean, is it the public shaming that you think is actually perhaps even worse than the, than the bill itself? Absolutely. In, the, in fact, while we've been performing our show at night, uh, we've encountered some gay men who are Ugandan wow. who have been uh, who have come to this country seeking asylum. So they're already fleeing their homes, they've lost their jobs, people are living in fear, and I think that, like I said, we, it's up to us to stand in solidarity with them and to protect them. And Matt, the anti-gay bill is threatening Uganda's aid, and you have your own nonprofit, the Uganda Project, so what's your reaction to all this? I think, like Griffin said, it's it's devastating. And uh, when there is injustice for someone somewhere, there is injustice for everyone everywhere. However, our organization, Uganda Project, is really an organization that's based on the principle that building relationships with people is the best way to help them and also help ourselves, because all aid is mutual aid. And so for us, uh, you know, what we do is we educate 10 Ugandan students. We pay for their schooling, we pay for their housing, their medical needs, everything they need to be successful students. And what we found is that by giving them an education, uh, it, it really makes them free thinkers. Educating so that even through on, education. Even, even on our last trip, uh, you know, been, our students were su supporting and loving. That's incredible. Thanks so much, Griffin Matthews and Matt Gold, co-creators of Witness Uganda and the co-directors of the Uganda Project, joining us from Boston this morning. That's it for this edition of Al Jazeera America.